No Boundaries radio show may contain adult material and coarse language. Listener discretion is advised. Mitch Scott from Seeds Spot Kill, and I want you to know that I'm listening to one of the coolest shows on the planet. This is No Boundaries Radio, and we're glad to have you. Better wear a cup. This is 
is Gabrielle Faust, and you're listening to No Boundaries Radio, where all the vampires hang out late at night. Hi there, this is the artist Mike Spliss. I'm over here in London, and I'm here to tell you that No Boundaries Radio has gone global and is drawing listeners from all over the world. Donna Stewart from Sci-Fi Radio, and you're listening to No Boundaries Radio. They're a little messed up, but they're cool. Welcome to the No Boundaries Radio Show. Are you ready for a wild ride in radio entertainment? Let's welcome our host, William Maltese, author of over 200 books, and Jojo from Vampireware, creator of jewelry and clothing for the undead. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the No Boundaries Radio Show. It's October the... Th- or, sorry, it's November. It's November the 13th. I had yeah, October for some yeah, reason. <laughs> I, I'm still in Halloween mode, of course. But, Time um, warp, yes. Yeah. But uh, tonight, our amazing guest is George Becker, and he's in a band called Jaded Past, and that was their song, Taken, that I played for the beginning of the show. Um, but before we talk to George, William... Just yeah. what have what have you been doing this week, and what are you drinking in honor of George and Jaded Past? What am I doing? I've been boring myself, silly Jojo, trying to get some housekeeping and painting done between rain and snowstorms. I'm sick to death of it all, and I hope I don't have to go outside again before spring or summer sets in. <laughs> Hibernate. Yeah, or, yeah, really. I mean, <laughs> talk about God. I could never be a handyman. Aside from that, I managed more proofing on my new cookbook. My number seven, this one done with my sister. Don't ever let anyone tell you that cookbooks are easy. There are other measurements I'd rather have in my dreams and cups and teaspoons and tablespoons. As for what I'm drinking this evening and keeping with tonight's theme of having fantastic George Becker on our show from the fantastic down and dirty rock and roll band dated past, I'm having a down and dirty martini. Very simple to make. And thank God because... I didn't have the energy to make anything too complicated this evening. It's nearly three ounces of gin and a half ounce of olive juice. Shake the gin and the olive brine with crushed ice and strain into a cocktail glass. Rub the glass rim with a wedge of lemon and garnish with cocktail onions. And if during the course of this evening's program that suddenly becomes too complicated, I'm prepared to drink the gin straight out. (laughs) Yeah. Straight, out, straight out of the bottle. So I thought that was a pretty good drink for this evening. Which brings us to the point of our show, Jojo, where you fill us in on what you've been up for, up to for the last seven days, along with VampireWear.com. Um, I just just added some really beautiful handbags to the site for um, you know for everybody's Christmas shopping. It's never mm-hmm. too early, and you get in on it now. And uh, they're beautiful handbags from Alchemy Gothic. Designs include coffin purses and backpacks, and uh, I've also got some really cool steampunk styles. I'm getting into the steampunk lately. So um, if you go to vampirewear.com and click on gothic handbags, you can see them all. If you use voucher code immortal1, and that's I-M-M-O-R-T-A-L-1, and it's the number one, you get 10% off anything on the site. So you save money and you can get your shopping done early. So they'll be more immortal, no. not immoral. No, yeah, immortal. Yeah, don't forget the tea. <laughs> yes, don't forget the tea. Right, but okay. um, we have a lot to talk about tonight, and I'm really, really happy to have George Becker on the show, the band Jaded Pass. So, George, thank you for coming on tonight. Oh, thank Hello, you. George. Thank you. Yeah, welcome, welcome. Why don't you start out? If you would please, by telling our listeners a little about yourself and how you got into the music business, was it really just well, bright lights and shady women? Well, um, how I got into the music business so far so far away that I don't remember actually. Um, <laughs> I've been in the music business for a long time, um, but as far as Jaded Past, we're we're just a rock and roll band out of out of Jersey. Um, we're going to put together a national tour in 2014. As of right now, we have one we have one record out, um, one CD out rather, and um, it's on jadedpass.com and iTunes. And we have 
um, a few videos out that are viral, and we have another one coming out on November 27th. So how long has your group been to, been to this group been together then? This this particular lineup of this group has been together about a year and a half, um, and we've played um, a, a fairly good amount of shows um, in like the Northeast, um, Rhode Island, Connecticut, um, Baltimore, and and Jersey, th- that type of thing. Um, we had uh, a West Coast thing scheduled for um, last month, but we had to postpone that until 2014, personal reasons of me. Yeah. And, yeah, so I'm looking That's forward good. to the West Coast. Did you, did you though, did you play music, like, when you were a little boy? Did you? <laughs> when you were a little boy? I, 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 <laughs> a little boy. I started, I mean, I still... <laughs> yeah, that, um, I started playing when I was, a, um, I don't know, I guess about 12 years old. And um, I've always been in bands through late grammar school, junior high, high school, the whole nine yards. And um, in the late 80s, I was in a band called Wicked Spin. We used to tour with White Lion and bands like that. And wow. then I took a break, mm-hmm. took a break, and then I came back and put, you know, after numerous of, of amounts of cover bands in the Jersey area, which everybody does in Jersey, those cover bands. Mm-hmm. And I put Julia really Cass together. This and has, yeah. That's it. And that's it. So. Yeah. Is it still popular, the cover bands? I, I remember that, too. Like, in the I mean, movies, there was a lot of cover bands. You know, but I think it's people It's popular. Like, yeah? Yeah, it's popular, um, but it's very um, clicky. And, um, mm-hmm. you know, I don't want to say, I'm, all my friends are in the cover bands in New Jersey, so I don't want to say too much about it. Yeah, well, they're working, um, I prefer, right? Yeah. Yeah, I prefer, you know, I prefer to do um, the Jada Pass original shows, and what I do is during the week and on my off nights, I do acoustic solo shows um, oh. throughout New Jersey. Yeah, that's nice. I've seen uh, some of your acoustic stuff on um, YouTube, and it's really nice. Thank you. Yeah. I appreciate that, yeah. So that's what I do. Uh, that's actually my uh, day job. <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> well, that's nice, yeah, though, that you get to do that, too, right? Yeah, it's good. It, it, it works. I like it. Yeah. What was this yeah. band's, um, I like the name of that band, Rat Salad. Um, <laughs> was that punk? No, actually, it was a cover band back in that, well, a long time ago. Um, oh. Yeah, it was one of my, one of my first, one of my first cover bands. Yeah. Was, was that younger. for the music, the rap music? No, it was just, I don't know. I, I don't even know where. I, we got the name from Black Sabbath song, and I have no idea. I was young. Yeah? <laughs> okay. You make you sound, <laughs> make you sound, <laughs> you sound like <laughs> far away gonna, from soul. I, mean. I, think, I think you're the same age as us. Well, we're going to chalk it up as just, that's what it was. <laughs> I have nothing else to say about that. No? <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, moving right along. Yeah. <laughs> but if you... Okay. okay what I was going to ask you, too, is, um, like, some of your influences. And, um, like, if there was another artist in the world that you could play with, you know, past, present, uh, who would it be? Like, who do you like Steve, right now? Steven Tyler. Oh, yeah. Um... um I've met a lot of people in my career, and I've never met Steven Tyler, and that's, uh, I would love to do any kind of musical endeavor with Steven Tyler. Steven Tyler is my, um, my main idol, but I go back to like, you know, T-Rex and, and early Kiss and the New York Dolls and stuff like that. Those are my influence. Um, you know, then of course, you know, you get in, in the later years, you got Nikki Six and Molly Crew and mm-hmm. um, both those type of bands, you know. And if you've heard my stuff, I mean, there's there's Bon Jovi in there, and you know, I'm I I am a commercial musician, um, even though a lot of people w- wouldn't like me to say that, but it's a business, and you know, I I, I like to be on the radio, so um, I I go with that, you know. I like commercial musicians. I like. I like things that are, are hooky and, um, you know, cliche. 
I don't really like drawn out songs and I don't write those type of songs. Um, my producer of my record was Steve, Steve Brown of Trickster. He produced the, the CD. So there's a lot of influence there, but those are the influence I have. A lot of uh, early eighties, late seventies type of musicians. Yeah. That's where I, yeah, that's mainly what I like. Well, well see there, Jojo, I thought you were going to ask him how the members of his group got together. Yeah. But, so uh, since you didn't ask the but question, I, I I'll wanna, ask. I want to add something, too. Yeah. That oh, I, do you? I did meet Steven Tyler. Ha-ha. <laughs> oh, uh, oh God, name dropper. Here we go. I know, yeah. but it was funny because I didn't recognize him, and I thought he was somebody else. How could you not recognize him? <laughs> I know. Well, well, I recognized him. At the bar story? Yeah, I was at a bar, and you were under the table, and he no, was... <laughs> no, and uh, it's a funny story. I'll I'll, t- I'll tell it really quick, um, because I think George will think it's funny, but uh, and the listeners, but uh, yeah, I was in a I was in a bar, and for some reason, like I seen this guy sitting there, and I was walking by, and I just stopped, and I was like going, I go where do I know you from? And I thought, because we used to go to all these rock bars. I was out in Edmonton and there was like a bar tin Lizzie's and all this. And I stop and I go, you know, I go, I go, you're a DJ somewhere, you know? (laughs) And then I looked at him and I go, Oh my God. And it it just hit me like a, like boom in the head. I go, I go, Holy shit. I go, you're Steven Tyler. And he's so funny. He looks down at himself and he goes, Yes, I am. <laughs> so, so I hung out and had a drink with him, and he was very nice, and yeah, yada yada yada. Anyways, that's, that's my awesome. Steven Tyler story, and I have a, a picture he signed, and he said, "You're my angel." Oh, Aww. is that cute? <laughs> yeah, is well, that cute or what? Yeah. So that's my Steven Tyler story. So, what were you going to ask, William? I was going to ask how the group. How did you, uh, Jaded Pass, got together? I mean, yeah. how, how the individual members came into, I mean, gravitated together to form a band? That's a good question. Um, well, what I did was I, I wanted to form, I wanted to do this um, this band. I, I had a bunch of songs that I have been written, been um, writing. And so what I did was I, I, I recorded the record with... Um, like I said, Steve Brown from Trickster and a, a lot of members from the Lita Ford band and other bands, all my friends that are musicians, I, I recorded the record with. Um, people from the band Raw Away and Pretty Boy Floyd and all, all these different bands. I, so I recorded the record and um, the one the one uh, mainstay of it is my bass player, Mark Mayer. We went to high school together, so he helped me with the record also. He's also in the band right now. Then I started to add... Um, the drummer, uh, Paul Bergen, I found at an open mic, um, which is really weird. I went to an open mic. My friend hosted an open mic, and I went there, and I saw Paul, and I asked him if he wanted to you know, check out my original band, and, and he did, and he's now the drummer of Jaded Past. And the other one is Paul Bandinelli. He's the guitar player. Uh, we used to play in a cover band called The Six or Nine. Um a while ago, and I just happened to call him up, and then he came in. So the live band is actually an extension of what I recorded. Um, what actually is on the record is a, is a lot of my friends. Um, the, the new record that we're going to record in 2014 will be um, mainly the gentlemen that are in the band now, but the, the, the touring part of the band is a little different than the recording part of the band, obviously. Um, mm-hmm. I did mostly that myself because I wanted to put it out there. It was mainly going to be in, in, in a, a solo project, but I feel from all the marketing experience that I had that it's easier to sell a band name than it is an unknown solo act. So that's where the Jaded Pass thing came, came about. Um, I don't know if that's good or bad, but right now the band that I have now, the, the it's a solid lineup, and I'm very happy with everybody. So, do you, do you that's, that's what else do you can. play? Yeah, do you play other instruments, or do you, do you play, I play all, all of them? Or I play, well, I play guitar. Um, I play guitar, little keyboards. Uh, I know how to play the drums, but I don't on the record, obviously. Um, yeah, I mainly play guitar and I sing, and I and I write all the songs. 
Um, so you write all the all the, all the songs that you do then are original, and are they are all are they all yours? Yeah. All the ones that are original, yes. I mean, we did do two covers on the record, which is "Roxy Roller" by Nick Gilder, and "I Don't Like Mondays" by the Boomtown Rats. Um, but everything else I wrote, and I continue to write. Right now, I have at least twenty songs ready for the next record, <clears throat> and then I got to choose a producer, which. I'm looking at Steve Brown again because it was a good fit for me. But there's a couple other ones in the mix that I might go with. Um, we'll have to see what happens. That's going to be in the summer of 2014. Well, that's great. Yeah. It's do good. you do your? Do you usually, when you're writing songs, do you usually come up with the music first or the lyrics? Um, I what I do is I come up. I'm going to say for the most part, 80 percent of the time, I come up with a hook line, like. You know, um, yeah. you know what I mean, like the, yeah. the tag in mind, and then I just write around that. But I can't say if it's if mu- sometimes it's music first, sometimes it's not. Um, and then you know, then I bring it into the producer, and like most of the time, it doesn't change that much, but it definitely changes. I write everything on an acoustic guitar, and then it goes from acoustic to laying down electric tracks, and then we go from there. But it's it's a long process for me. Um, it, it, it starts out, like I said, a singer-songwriter type of song, and then ends up a rock and roll song somehow. So it's, it's either or. I have a very weird process. If I have a process at all, I guess. <laughs> yeah, do you write, do you write, you know, write the notes down on paper, or just... No, I just play. I It's transcribed a different way. I don't, I don't... It's not the old classical way where I'm writing notes down on paper. I just uh, I just play. I, I sit. I have a studio in my house. I have my own studio, so you know I just hit the record button and then I just play. And then however it comes out, it comes out. So actually, no, there's no nowhere is there nowhere is one of your songs written down, meaning nobody else can really play it unless they memorize it from listening to it. Is that correct? You mean like? You mean like composed music type of thing? Or? Yeah, I mean, is there somewhere where your songs are sat down on paper? So if another band wanted to cover it, I mean, they could just do it from the from the from the musical score rather than no, just not, listening. Not not basically, no. Oh. Unless they would change that, no. That's really it's neat. It's like that. It's like well, that. Yeah, it's music. fascinating because yeah. I mean, I mean, stuff can get lost. Yeah. yeah. But you play by ear then. I play, yeah, I play mostly by ear. Yeah. 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 Well, that's neat. Yeah. I was looking on um, YouTube, and that opening song we played, it's Mm -hmm. got like 300,000 plus views on YouTube. Yeah, that was was our first professional video. Um, That's awesome. before Before that, I had put out, when the record first came out, I put out um, two homemade type of videos just to test the waters. Mm-hmm. And um, so then I hired a videographer, and um, we did take in. And through the month, it started to gain a lot of a lot of hits. And with those hits, we were taking it out on the road. That's when we started to go into other states and, and start to try to, um, you know, bring the show out to other states and I don't know how that happened and I promote a lot I mean with with Facebook and Twitter and every other social media I promote a lot and I do a lot of radio interviews and I do whatever I can to get it out there and I mean the second video that we did was is for Hurt and um, that had I think 80 something thousand yeah that was a lot too yeah yeah, so I'm hoping that the new one, it's called Scratch the Itch, and it'll be out November 27th. I hope I'm I'm hoping for a million. I mean, I mean yeah, you know, that's what I'm really, um, I don't know how that happens. I don't I don't know really. I don't know the in in and outs of YouTube, so I don't really know how that happens. Well, whatever you're doing, you're doing it right. Because <laughs> I was just I was just like, wow, like that's that's like really awesome. Yeah, that's major. That's a major hit. Yes. Oh, major. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. yeah that, definitely. That. Did you do you like shooting the videos? Is it fun? You know, um yeah. 
I do. I, I really do. Um, it, it's it's fun, but then once the, the footage is done and I get together with the videographer, I mean, I had uh, this this last one will be the third different videographer. I try to use somebody different every time, and I try to new try to use people that are new and um, you know that are trying to make their name too. Mm-hmm. Um, I think this this next one that we're putting out in November will be the best one. Um, we shot we shot part of it at strip club, so. Um, oh, it's got to be was, great then. <laughs> that was more fun than the other ones, yeah. yeah. But, um, yeah. <laughs> but uh, it was good. Yeah, yeah. I, I do, to answer the question, yeah, I do like I like the whole process because I'm pretty much in charge of the whole process. So I even write the storyline and how I really want it to go. So um, with this whole jaded past um, project, I'm going to call it a project instead of a band. Um, I'm pretty much at the helm of everything, so yeah, I have a good time doing everything. Um, I just try to make it so that it's a vision of mine, and I hope everybody likes it. That's all. Um, so some people have their opinions, and some people don't. And so um, yeah, it, it's fun. That's, you have that's your amazing. you have your opinions. Yeah, no, and everybody does. Count. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so when you well, so when you go in for like a video, you already have a concept in mind. You know, you know yeah. basically what you're going to do before you do it. I do. Um, I mean, I, I lock myself in a studio eight hours a day, and I write, and I do. You know, so yeah, the closest one is my bass player Mark, and you know, like I said, I've known him since high school, so he kind of knows what's in my head, and he, he's also he acts as a stage manager. And he runs the stage show, and you know everybody's pretty much in sync of what 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 I want. But um, you know, I don't want to say that my opinion is the only one that matters. But I kind of like have this all like you know schemed out before we even get to that point. So wow. you know that's that's where that is. Uh, you know, well, I, I was I, I, yeah, I was thinking ahead. if you like when you're writing the song, you probably yeah. have a vision of what almost like the little video goes in your head, right? <laughs> Sometimes. Yeah? <laughs> it, 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 <laughs> um, well, I don't know. My wife might be listening to this, so i got to watch what I'm saying. It. No, I'm oh. just kidding. <laughs> um, um, it, it, yeah, I do. I mean, I know what the song's about, but, but as you know, like music, if somebody else is listening to the song, they might take it a different way. So I try to keep that in mind, too. Like the general, the general uh, opinions of the song. I do ask, you know, like like different people that I know that listen to the song, what they think about things. You know, like th- there's a song "Traces" that is a ballad on my record, and it's about my daughter. But it could be about anything to anybody, you know. So I, I when I make a video, I try to make it so that it's a little general, so that everybody gets a feel of it, not just me. That's what I do with the video. So your music is available on what CD Baby? Is that correct? Are you on the, um, the are CD? You on, yeah, the CD. Uh, yeah, it's available on CD Baby, um, Amazon, uh, JadedPass dot com, iTunes. Well, iTunes is just download, obviously. Um, but there's there's so many. If you put in Jaded Pass uh, on on a search in Google. There's so many different things that come up that are selling the CD, and they all it all comes from one direct hub, but there's a lot of different um, avenues of buying it. Oh, excellent! So, you, I mean, you have a good you have a good distribution network. I mean, yeah, it's not too bad. I mean, you know, considering that it's in, you know, I I'm actually uh, distributing it out of out of my own production company. Um, so, you know. It, I would wish for a, a distribution uh, deal for the next record, so I don't have to do all the work. But it, it's also a good thing financially for me to do it all through me. You know what I'm saying? Until it gets a little crazy, I guess. Yeah. I can get to that point. So there's a physical. There is a physical CD somewhere. I mean, yes. they can buy a physical CD, and they can also download. Depends upon you how they. You can either download or... everything. Yes. There's a physical CD um, that we have, um, and that's available. Like I said, jadedpass.com is the best way, and then there's Amazon and uh, CD Baby also. 
and there's a few other ones that I don't even know, but I know that it, it funnels through CD Baby. Yeah, as long as it gets back to you. <laughs> That's the main thing, right? Yeah. yeah. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Yeah. Um, I hope yeah. it all does. That's for sure. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. But um, you guys, I was thinking, you were talking about Hurt, and uh, I was going to play just a quick break song here so everybody can hear it, uh, Jaded Past Hurt. And uh, when Thank we you. come back, I just wanted to talk to you a bit about um, the live shows and, and the same thing about the advertising online and that. I think that's really fascinating. So um, if you guys want to hang in there, it's like three minute, three minutes and nine second break, okay? <laughs> okay. When the sun goes down, do you start to crave something dark and decadent? Vampire wear has something for your immortal soul. Jewelry, accessories, and if you dare, vampire wear. Home of the Tribal Fang Necklace, complete with certificate of authenticity, except no other. Get your vampire wear at vampirewear.com. <laughs> we always get what we pray for.
Looking for some erotic literature? Guaranteed to ignite your passion. Look no further than author William Maltese. With titles such as Dare to Love and Oz, Circus Sex, Godmaker Vampires of London, and Love Hurts. You can pick your favorite flavor from mainstream romance to S&M and gay erotica. Want to get hot in the kitchen or the back of the boat? William also has a line of tasty cookbooks. Check out Back of the Boat Gourmet Cooking and even gourmets have to diet. Go to WilliamMaltese.com and enjoy over 200 books and over four decades of love. In a world of the Para-X Radio Network lies a lounge. A lounge with food for mind and soul. A place to gather, learn, and chat about the unexplained and paranormal while being served by your most congenial host, Reverend Tim Shaw. Next stop, the Black Cat Lounge, Thursdays at 8 p.m. Eastern on the Para-X Radio Network. Hey, everybody. We are back from break. And we're talking to George Becker from the awesome rock band Jaded Past. If you're just tuning in now. Hello. 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 <laughs> Everybody's <laughs> back from break. Oh, yeah. Oh, pardon me. Yes, okay. Yeah. Yes, I'm back. Yeah. George is back. George, George, George is back. back. I'm back. Yeah. I'm here. <laughs> But um, yeah, I wanted to ask you, George, um, when you're doing your your live shows, how how would you describe your live shows? Our live shows are um, very energetic. I mean, you know, obviously it goes by a budget. So, like, you know, if I can, it would be like a Motley Crue show. But with the budget being a little more subdued than Motley Crue has, it would be. Um, uh, it's just energetic and, and, and very, very lively. We we also um, interact, you know, the audience a lot and and things like that. Yeah. You know, it's a basic rock show with with a little more energy. Yeah, yeah, I was yeah. seeing That's that online a lot. That, that your your shows were were very energetic. You were very yeah charismatic. Well, well thank you. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. Butter him up. What do you want? What do you What do you want, Jojo? <laughs> a T-shirt. <laughs> oh, there, well, there, there it is. There it is. There it is. Uh, are there any uh, Are there any dates? Are there any live dates? Do you have anything yes. coming up that people can uh, pay we have, to? We have two dates left in 2013. We have December 7th. Um, we're playing in Donnellan, in New Jersey. Um, it's a headlining show where we are the headlining act, and we have um, three openers, and that's at Roxy and Dukes in Donnellan, New Jersey. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we also have December 14th at Dingbats in Clifton, New Jersey, which we are playing a Christmas show um, for VH1's That Metal Show. Oh, nice. Eddie Trunk. Yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to that. And there's there's about five other bands on the bill, but I, I I think we're opening the night, and I'm looking forward to it. More more for um meeting everybody. Actually, you know, we're gonna do our set, and then we're gonna you know hang out and meet everybody. So that's gonna be really good too. December 14th, and everything's on our website. I mean, you know, I'm also uh, I should say this. I I am opening for Marshall Crenshaw. Um, I don't know if you remember, remember Marshall Crenshaw, but um, I'm doing an acoustic solo show opening up for him playing. Uh, I'm going to be doing J.D. Pass songs, but acoustic, on December 12th. And that's in Teaneck, New Jersey, at Mexicali Live. I'm looking forward to that because it's something different for me. Yeah. Um, now I'm just, yeah, I'm going to do the whole acoustic solo thing, but... When I usually do acoustic solo, I usually do a lot of covers. This is going to be mostly Jaded Pass songs. Oh, that's so, amazing. Yeah, I wish I mean, they were in New Jersey. Yeah. Very yeah. good. Very good. From what I hear, very good things can make you wish you were in New Jersey. But that would that kind of makes me wish that I was in New Jersey a little. Yeah, a little, a little, a little closer. Well, yeah. yeah, a little closer. No, because that, that 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 sounds that sounds like a that sounds like an awfully lot of that sounds like fun. Yeah. By the way, yeah. George. 
since I majored in advertising marketing, I'm interested yeah. in your take, since you've been in the music, music business for so long, as, as regards to your opinion on the pros and cons of promoting and advertising a band on the Internet in this day and age, as opposed to, you know, when that wasn't quite the possibility. Is this an adva- is the Internet advantageous for you and, and increased profits, do you think, rather than... Uh, you know the old, the old way of doing things before. BI. Well, um, I'm gonna say it's it's yes, it, it's definitely more profitable and and easier, but it's also a little more. Um, I'm gonna say that people that are on these social networks and and everything, they get a little more annoyed because it's easier to keep posting things over and over again and over and over again and over and over again, and then they almost are turned off by it. Whereas when you did it, um, you know, back in the, I'm going to quote, old days, back when you had day. a flyer and telephone pole or you had a, you know, it's word of mouth and this and that. I mean, yeah, it was harder to get people to the shows, but it was more of a, it almost created more of an event, whereas now with I'm going to use Facebook, for example. Um, I post on Facebook every day, and it's almost to the point where people are like, why do you post every day? But if I don't, I get the same question. Well, where are you playing next? Uh Um, So it's kind of catch 22 but it makes it a lot easier. Um, I don't really know how to answer the question to say if it was better because it's definitely a lot easier, but it's the same way when MTV came out. You know, yes, it was a lot better because you can see the artist and this and that, but then that kind of went to the wayside just the same. So I don't know if it's better. It's just easier. That's the okay. Best how about how about how about how about competition wise? How about uh, in in these days of the internet? Is it like in book publishing, where you've got loads more people? to right. compete with and loads more people out there and loads more people selling their stuff. Is it right. do you find that to be you find that to be true? Do you find it more and more difficult for you to single yourself out of the you know, the the flotsam and jetsam that can uh more you know what? I, Yeah, I, I believe that too. Um because now everybody is there. Um it's it's and this goes with the point about being easier. Um, you know, you, you take a photograph, you record a song, and you're a musician, just like that. Yeah. Whereas if, in the old days, you had to work a little harder to get noticed. Now, you know, I mean, I'm not going to put anybody down by no means, but there are people that have made an overnight success from YouTube, mm-hmm. and... And and I'm just going to leave it at that. Yeah, with very um, little talent. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, like I said, I never put anybody down because if they're making it, they're making mm-hmm. it, you know. Yeah, and you never yeah. know when you'll meet them. Yeah, I mean. Well, yeah, yeah, and yeah. You know, my opinion is my opinion, but, you yeah. know, in, in, in access to the Internet, anybody can be anybody can be a star. Anybody can be a, a movie star. Anybody can be a musician. It's just all about you know, the take on on what you do with it. I mean, it's just very hard to, to comprehend that you just you put out a YouTube video and if it goes viral, you're an instant success. End Please. of conversation. Well, you're well on your way with... Well, yeah, you've got, you know, you've got, I'm trying. Trying. Yeah, you've got considerable yeah. hits, so that, I mean, that's good. That's, you, some way you seem to have singled your group out from the... You know, from the rest, because there's a lot of people that go on there. I mean, who don't get any hits at all. Yeah, they're there for and some you. Some of them are actually, some of them are actually pretty good. I think. Yeah. Of course, yeah. I'm not a. Well, because I'm a rich you can't just you can't just put it on there and, and just leave it sit there. I mean, you know, you got to kind of promote a little bit. You know. Yeah. So, you know, that's what we try to do. We try to promote as much as we can. Well, like you said, people oh. get tired. You know, some people it's repetitive to them, but then you've got all your new followers and your new fans, like you said, that want to know where you are. And right. another thing that, as you were saying, you know, like flyering the telephone poles and all that stuff, at least the cool thing about the internet is 
the fan base could be much huger because you're getting people in other countries as well. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Yeah, so that's, we, that's we, another we've sold, turn. We've, yeah, we've sold a lot of CDs um, definitely out of our area. Yeah. Um, and that's a good thing. You know, it's just that we, we want to get touring, you know, to hmm. get to these places. It's just that, you know, the budgets are, are you know, way out of control. Yeah. Um, to try to get to that point. But we're, we're getting there. Yeah. We should, you know, we should be at that point um, in, in early 2014. Well, you know, I've noticed about I've noticed about sites like like Facebook. It, the thing in regard to posting is the fact that you can post something and it and it's here and then gone. I mean, and mm-hmm. people are lucky. Right. Some people are lucky if they see it at all. So unless you do post and keep posting, I mean, even the same thing, your message can be lost in the just in the shuffle. I mean, sometimes when I go to my Facebook page, I don't have. The, the time or the inclination to stroll through all the right all the chickens that I've got. So I mean, right. one of the advantages. I mean, people can't get very tired of it if people sit in front of their you know computer all day long and check everything that comes out when it comes on. I can see where they might get tired. But other people, I mean, well, maybe they don't have other lives. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Hey, thank you, thank everybody. You, just, just, that 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 is my um. I say that all the time. I mean. You know, because you only see Facebook in general. You only see what's on, you know, the the ten the ten posts. Yeah. Like you said, if, unless yeah. you're somebody that that has everything going to their phone or has everything, you know, uh, in front of a computer, you know, twenty four hours a day, you, you're not going to see. You see the ten posts, mm-hmm. and then if it's if it's, if it's the eleventh post, then, well, then it's already gone. Yeah, it's gone and, and you, you, you don't sit again. So you almost have to keep plugging yeah. for people because it's so easy to it's so so easy to miss. Are you? Do you prefer? Do you prefer your music on CDs or download uploads? Downloads. Uh, I mean, do you have a preference in regard to how you like your music presented, or is it all just a business care. and it doesn't make any difference as long as you get your your royalties? Yeah, I don't- I don't care. You can go through two cups and a wire. I don't care. As long as, <laughs> okay. as, long as people hear it, as long as people are hearing it, and you know, I, of course, I want them to buy it. But um, as long as it's out there, it's it's okay with me. Yeah. There's nothing better than when we play shows and people actually know our songs. Um, there's nothing better than that. You know. Yeah. As a front man, as a singer, there's nothing better than that. That makes it all worth the while when people actually know your songs when you're doing them. Do you find um, in New Jersey, because you're playing a lot of dates there, or do you have the fans that follow you around? No, I actually, we played in Connecticut, we played in Rhode Island, people know us, um, and we played in Baltimore. Like, when we play, pretty much, I try to promote the shows in advance enough where people, our music is out in those areas. Like, I do contact radio stations, and, um, and local, uh, I dare to say, record stores, but there are record stores out there still. Um, there's there's that, and and um, you know, and and uh, we we send the videos to the clubs that we're playing out there. So you know, we try to get our music out there. So you know, you know, a month in advance so that people actually know that you know something about us when we get there. But in Jersey, yeah, pretty much people know who we are, so it's pretty. cool. That works. Yeah. How come there's so many bands? How come there's so many bands in Jersey? I mean, I'm surprised by how many musicians yeah. I hear come from New Jersey. Is there something yeah. about the water? Yeah. Everybody's <laughs> no. a musician. There's a lot of in- karaoke. There's a lot of karaoke in New Jersey. So everybody's a musician in New Jersey. Oh, uh, Kimmy um, J. George. Kimmy um, J. is in chat, and she is asking. Yeah. What does the fox say? I mean, I WTF I is that about? <laughs> is this an inside joke, Jimmy? <laughs> I don't know. She said, "Ask George." What I fuck? don't know what that means. That's one of that's one of them YouTube sensations. Oh, what does the that's fox a, say? Oh, yeah, that's, oh, that's, oh that's, you know what? Oh. And they're oh. like national. 
that and gang style, as you know, they come out of nowhere. Oh, I see. Okay, because yeah, I I remember I was at a, a friend's house a couple weekends ago, and she was she's a teacher in school, and they were doing something about. She goes, I didn't know what it was. All the kids are asking what the fox says. Yeah, so, I'm not I'm not a good fan. Yeah. Leave it to Kimmy J to be I know. Up, I thought it was up on the list. <laughs> I know. Up on the list, while the rest of us are going. Duh. Yeah. <laughs> Too yeah. Funny. Definitely. Well, what can I say? Yeah. Um, uh, have you got any advice, George, for people like new artists just getting started in the business? Um. The, the only advice that I can give anybody at this point is um. You know, you just got, I mean, I've been doing this for a long time and I'm fortunate enough to, I actually do this for a living. Um, but of course, like I said, I, I do a lot of things with it. Like I play acoustic solo shows, acoustic duo shows, um, Jaded Past. I have a cover band called T- 10 Minute Lincoln that, um, we get together every once in a while. We're, we're all best of friends. So we get together once in a while and we do that. Um, just keep doing music. I mean, you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of jealous people and haters and people that will just destroy your dream and um, can't ever listen to that. You just, you know, I mean, it's hard to do it for a living. And uh, up until five years ago, I wasn't. But you know, I have a good support system and people that are around me that you know support me in what I do. So you know, that's what you need to find. Um, that's the best. That's the best. I have a wife that that constantly is behind me on what I do. Um, without that support system, it's very hard to make it any business, nevertheless, the music business. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, and that's that's the biggest thing that I can say. Yeah. You know, well, keep going. With what, uh, what hi, George's wife. That's great. <laughs> I don't know if she's listening. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> she's going, oh, he's just doing that music thing in there. <laughs> Well, that's great, though. It's, you, yeah, you really need to have your, um, you know, your support, support system. you know, because, yeah. it, well, that, that's the other thing about the Internet is there's people out there that just like to go around and they just hate everything because they hate themselves. So, you know. Exactly. You yeah. know, miserable people, that's what they do. I mean, yeah, it is what it is. The world is filled with all kinds of people. I just don't have time for that. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. dead karma. Yeah. Yeah, no, no drama. Yeah. <laughs> nah. Well, yeah. so look, as long as you love what a, you're doing, that's no, what this, matters. This is a paranormal channel, channel, a uh, paranormal station. And since the rumor is you've never had a paranormal experience, I was going to ask you if you'd at least like to come back and haunt somebody if you were a ghost. But I'm not going <laughs> to ask you that because you seem like such a good guy in regard to not wanting to badmouth anybody. I don't think I'd get a, an answer from you anyway. So I'm just going to. Yeah, I don't. I don't Not bad mouth anybody. <laughs> it's, just, it's just bad for business to bad mouth anybody. Yeah, doesn't mean, right. Doesn't mean I don't have bad opinions about people. I just rather not air them publicly. Yeah, but that question could be either way, William. Because it's if you were a ghost, who yeah. who would you come back and haunt? Because <laughs> if I was a ghost, there'd be a lot of. A lot of people in trouble right now. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Well, I, I would think. Yeah, uh, you're I, thinking of something favorable, are you, can, uh, Jojo? Like, yeah. Well, back, I was thinking uh, I would like to haunt. Like, you some... would come back and haunt your boyfriend or your dog. Well, just, just, but, but, so I see. Or happy... the garlic down in your basement. <laughs> just to see happy things, right? Like, oh, like I never haunts... found, Yeah, you say you think of yeah. Some people think of paranormal is very nice. I have to have a. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's the difference with me. Thing, you know, a ghost is coming back, they're not going to be very nice. But I suppose, like, you know, Casper, I suppose. I would be. haunt somebody. I wouldn't scare them. I just might go and check and see what they're doing. And it might be somebody, I mean, you know, if I was a ghost, I could go see, you know, what somebody else is doing. And, you know? <laughs> no, no, not me. I'd haunt them. I'd make their life the worst. Yeah. yeah, that's what I. That's what I say. What's the point of being a ghost if you can't kill the crap exactly. out of? Exactly. <laughs> well, there. Okay, there's maybe a few people I would scare the crap out of. But well, there you go. See there. Even she's losing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Even I have yeah. a, an evil side. Yes, there it is. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, so you have a bunch of uh, live, you have quite a few live shows coming up. Yeah. Two for the rest of the year, right? Yeah. yeah. That's the, well, three, actually. One's the three. Oh, that's right, because you have that acoustic one. Do you want to go ahead and yeah. repeat those so the people who are in the area mm -hmm. that didn't catch it the sure. first time? I'd be, I'd be glad to. December 7th, I'm at Roxy and Dukes in Den Ellen. That's with Jaded Pass, obviously. Um, December 12th, I'm doing an acoustic solo show. Um, doing Jada Pass songs, but acoustic, with Marshall Crenshaw at um, Mexicali Live in Teaneck, New Jersey. And then December 14th, Jada Pass is playing VH1's That Metal Show Christmas Party at Dingbats in Clifton. And then after that, we're, we're done in, until January, which um, we have a lot of things coming up in the new year. But best thing to do is go to jadapass.com. It's always it's updated every day, um, and everything's on there. We we also sell merch and our CDs on there. Yeah, they have a lot of shameless plug. Shameless plug. No, no, no. Jadedpass.com because you have a lot of great stuff on there. T-shirts and, and all. Yeah, T-shirts. <laughs> well, I, something told me that when my own. I have um. I got my my uh, tattoo Steve shirt today. So so that's cool. I gotta put some pictures up of that. He was on our show before. Tattooed Steve Storage Unit of Terror. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh. It's a lot to fit on a T shirt. <laughs> but it's a very cool well, shirt. Lucky for lucky for uh tat yes. Yeah. You you've got plenty of room to I have a funny thing though, in chat. The yeah. Rev Reverend Tim Shaw's in there and he yeah. goes he goes, if he's coming back, he's haunting a gentleman's club. Uh, so the so he can scare the kitchen into making better food, and so I just typed in chat, and you're there for the food, Tim. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> <I don't... laughs> and he wrote back, "Yes." Um, what else would I be there for? That's what he said. <laughs> Did you mention you were going to be on his show on the? Yes, 14th? that's tomorrow. tomorrow. You mentioned that. In, in one ear and out the other. Yeah, you might as well, you might as well yeah. give yourself a plug if you haven't already. Not yeah. if you have, you might as well give yourself another one. Yeah, t tomorrow night. And then night. You should also make, we should also make sure that, well, I guess uh, George has already said that the best place to get them is uh, jadedpass.com. Jadedpass.com. Although I suppose you could Google them or Bing them and a whole gob of stuff would come up too, so. Yeah, yeah, well, I did today, and um, there's, yeah, there's an, a lot of stuff about the band, and I, I tell everybody, um, well, you just go to jadedpass.com, and, and George has all the, the videos right on the main page that are on YouTube, too. So go there and uh, like the channel on YouTube because it's it's well worth it. There's a lot of neat stuff and some stuff that you don't have. You have your Christmas song, and um, there was a Rocky Horror song on there I heard. I like that. The picture show. Yeah, that mm -hmm. was acoustic. Yeah. Um, can I mention that one Christmas song, by the way? Yeah, sure. Uh, the Christmas... You can mention it if you want. We we re we recorded um, uh, Run Run Rudolph um, mm -hmm. last year with um, my producer Steve Brown and and the band and and um, we're putting it back on iTunes. It's on iTunes right now, and and part of the proceeds is going to autism research. So oh, and that's deal. only on iTunes. It's it's on iTunes dot com, and it's Jaded Pass, Run Run Rudolph, and like I said, um, most of the proceeds um, are going to uh, autism research. Oh, that's great. But you know, what... I was going to ask you when you said you were doing a Christmas show whether you were actually had any Christmas music, and it sounds as if you are. We only do that. One. That's a great song, yeah. though. Yeah, and yeah. we'll we'll post I'm that gonna, on I'm our Facebook. I'm going to dress up as a guitar player like Santa Claus. <laughs> and we'll put no, that on our really Facebooks not. too. We'll link to the iTunes, iTunes uh, link there for for the Run Run Rudolph. That'd be cool. How I, long is it? We are going to play out with one of his songs. Yes, we are. Um, Do you know how long that song is, so that you will have time to play it yes, all instead of yes. interrupting it in the middle? Are you watching the time? Because uh, as usual, I'm not. <laughs> I'm <laughs> yes, not. I'm watching the time. Oh, okay. But, um, all right. Yeah, like we said, um, tomorrow night I'm going to be on um, the Black Count. Black Cat Lounge with Reverend Tim Shaw, and that's the same time at 8, 8 p.m. Eastern Time, and you can hear it here on Parax.com, um, CBS Radio The Sky, AOL, Yahoo, and Radio.com, and also iTunes. So 
Um, yeah, you know, this station gets... Yeah. A lot of coverage I did. Yeah. <laughs> I did. <laughs> well, I know. I know. I know, yeah. I know. I know we, we've averaged 9,000 listeners a time. So, mm. you know, I try to think about it when we're live because I would get nervous. Oh, yeah. Right. <laughs> okay. Yes. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Very yeah. well. Oh. But, yeah, thank you so much, George, for being on the show. Well, yes, George. We appreciate yeah. it. I'm looking forward to thank hearing you. some of your music as soon as JoJo gets the sound. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can go to YouTube, William. Well, of course. Well, I do. I do. I do. Yeah. But he was he was channeling his music through his side of it, and you were getting the music on your side of it, and I was just sitting here <laughs> all by myself doing yeah. what one does. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so everybody, jadedpast.com, you'll get everything there. And if you're looking for some great one-hand reads, romance stories, and cookbooks, go to amazon.com and put in William Maltese, and you'll pull up. Well, over 200 books William's written and if you're looking for gothic jewelry funky footwear and some really great gifts for your favorite vamps for Christmas go to uh, vampirewear.com and I'm going to play us out with Scratch the Itch excellent and excellent. perfect timing because my boyfriend just got home and the dogs are all barking <laughs> <laughs> okay Look, good night thanks, everybody thanks, yeah, thanks, and George, thank you so much for being on the show George Thank you. Good night. Good night. All right. Eddie says good night, too.